So, how has everyone been doing with the COVID-19 lockdown? I hope you're keeping your mind active and not just vegetating in front of the TV set. Myself, I've been taking a few courses and I took a course in Fusion 360, which I will have a rant about Fusion 360 a little later in this video. I've been called back to work for one day a week, which is okay by me because now I get to spend four other days of the week, well actually six other days of the week in the shop making things and working on the house. And how about those government stimulus checks? Is everybody happy? I hope you've at least decided to save some of that money. I've saved half of mine and the other half I used to buy this, a new 3D printer. Hello everyone, I am Jeffrey Hunter. Welcome to the shop. In case you haven't guessed already, this is going to be a vlog video. I'm going to talk about 3D printers, this new 3D printer I've got, and a rant on Fusion 360. Stand by. Well, the first thing I noticed here is this is packaged really well. It came from China, obviously, and absolutely nothing was broken or messed up. It's pretty unbelievable since this lockdown started. It's like there was a run on 3D printers. Everybody was ordering 3D printers. Uh, I had to order this one from China directly. Everything else was just sold out. It took about two months to get here. In case you're wondering how much I paid, I paid 450 bucks. That included shipping. They send you all the tools that you're going to need with it. A putty knife, Allen wrenches, diagonal cutters. And they send you some filament. The one I got was white. You have no choice over what they send you. They just send you what they send you. Now the nice thing about ordering from Creality here is it's about 90% assembled. All the motors are on it. Everything is connected. The only thing you have to do is put the Z-axis here and attach it to the bottom, which is very easy to do. This is probably the hardest part of the whole assembly is putting these side brackets on. You have to push them into this little channel they leave you and it has to go crossways 90 degrees to the channel or it won't attach properly and it'll come loose and uh, fall off. It's really not all that bad. Once you get it on there, it's on there. You don't have to do it again. You are going to want to make sure you double check your work just to make sure everything is nice and tight and put in the right place. Now these little orange pieces are for trim, purely aesthetics. It's not going to have anything to do with the function of the machine. You have no control over what color they send you. You just get what you get. I only used a couple of pieces on it just to see what it looked like. This is the power selector switch. You're going to want to make sure that is in the correct position before you turn it on. Otherwise you may see the magic smoke and they will not warranty that if you, that's the reason why it burned up. Next thing you're going to have to do is to set the distance between the nozzle and the print bed. That is kind of a pain in the neck to do. It isn't hard. It's just a pain. It takes a little while to do. You have to make sure you do that with the power off. You have to do all four corners and it's going to take a couple of times to get it right. A 
Luckily, they put these big knobs on there, which makes the job a little bit easier to do. Next thing we do is add the filament. You cut off the crooked stuff on the end. Then you see that little box there to the right that I'm putting the filament in at first. That's the sensor, empty filament sensor. This thing will shut itself down. It'll pause itself when you run out of filament, which is a really nice feature on this thing. And then you can just resume your print after you put new filament in. But you're going to take this, push the filament all the way until it hits the nozzle. And then you are pretty much... You see the auto home here? Press the button, it just it homes itself, goes to zero, zero. Puts the z-axis down to where you set it. And then you just start printing. What it's doing here is it's printing out the raft. You can tell that uh, I did a decent job of setting the depth of the nozzle to the print bed because that raft is working out nice. It's putting the plastic right down on the glass. If that was off, if the measurement was not right, if I did something wrong, there's no way it would be printing right now. And that is the print. You grab your putty knife that they give you and pop it off the bed. Bob's your uncle. Now this is the first thing I've printed out. And you can see it's really pretty daggone nice. This is the lowest setting of the printer, which means I'm the lowest quality but the fastest speed. This little plastic piece here is called the raft. I'll take and peel this raft off. They have to start out with a raft on the bottom so that the plastic adheres better so the parts stay uh, nice. You have less failures, I've found out, if you use a raft. And it printed out this little cover that goes on it. I don't know what I'll do with it. Probably just throw it away, but it looks pretty nice. I've also been doing some test prints trying to figure out G-code, trying to figure out how it works. I just did a quick couple of little boxes. They're just kind of junk. And I downloaded something from Thingiverse to use with the Milwaukee Packout system. And this is a little bin that goes into the Milwaukee Packout system that you can print out and use free of charge. Thingiverse is a pretty cool, pretty cool thing to get into when you have a 3D printer. This is a pretty ugly color, but you know it'll do for now. Now on to Fusion 360. Uh, really frustrating. Not that I don't like Fusion 360. I love Fusion 360. I think what they're doing with this and while they're giving it to people for free to learn it, I think is pretty awesome. But the problem is, it, what is good about Fusion 360 is the problem with Fusion 360. It's relatively new software. It's been out there a few years, but still relatively new as far as software goes and they're adding a lot to it. Now that's good at the same time it's bad because there's a reason why people call it Confusion 360. It is not easy to learn that software. There are a absolute crap load of menus and sub menus and different little settings. One thing goes a little bit wrong or you click something by accident Hose job. <clears throat> you're, you're hosed. Forget about it. You're going to have to start all over. And learning it, you can learn it through books, you can learn it through YouTube, you can learn it through places like Skillshare. I, I'm taking a course through Skillshare right now and I can tell you only about half of the projects will work. The other half, it doesn't work at all. The instructor will tell you, okay, click here and do this. Go to this menu over here. Well, that menu no longer exists. Or they've changed the name of it to something else. 
it, it is just an absolute pain in the ass. And if you have got videos older than three months, you might as well forget about even clicking on it. There's some other videos that other people have done were really good videos a year, two years ago. Totally unusable right now. You might as well not even worry, if, don't, don't even look at it. If the video is older than three or four months, I wouldn't even click on it. If you're on YouTube, wouldn't even click on it. It's going to be nothing but frustration. And books, forget about it. Forget about the books. Unless it's been printed in the last few months, it will be completely obsolete. It will do you no good. It's worth learning Fusion 360, especially if you have a 3D printer. You have to use some type of CAD program like that to get to draw out what you want and to get it converted to an STL file. Fusion 360 does that very well. But talk about a pain in the posterior. It just sucks. If you've had problems with Fusion 360, let me know down in the comments below. And if you have any tips that could help us out, let everybody know in the comments section. And I'll see you next time.